Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Managed Security Made Easy. I'm Liz Fox, Senior Marketing Events Coordinator at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be part of today's event. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, make sure that your audio is streaming correctly. The audio will stream to your computer speakers. Be sure to check the volume setting on your computer to make sure that the volume is turned up and at an audible level. If you're experiencing technical difficulties, please click, click on the help widget. It's the question mark icon on your console and covers common technical issues. If you have a question during the presentation, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. Our speakers will remain on the line to answer questions at the conclusion of the webinar. If you would like more resources pertaining to today's presentation, click on the resources widget at the bottom of your console. We will also be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the on-demand webcast at the conclusion of the webinar. So now, let's get on with today's presentation. Our moderator for today's event is Jason Eiler. Jason has nearly 20 years of security software experience and has spent most of his time working directly with hundreds of customers across several industries and international borders. In his current role as Senior Manager of Managed Services at Tripwire, he is responsible for developing consultative service offerings to help customers solve complex business and IT problems in creative ways. So now, without further delay, I will turn it over to Jason Eiler. All right. Thanks, Liz. And um, thanks, everybody, for attending. I appreciate you um, taking time out of your day to, uh, to join us this morning. So, as uh, Liz mentioned, uh, I've been with uh, I've been in the industry for more than a few years, and uh, Tripwire for close to twenty. So, it's been a um, very interesting uh, few decades, seeing a lot of uh, a lot of change and evolution. And um, honestly, I think that um, the current themes that the industry is dealing with and the transition to uh, more cloud-centric services is um, very fundamental and is pervasive in a lot of different aspects of the industry and is causing a really significant shift in the way um, clients and uh, their customers interact with uh, technology providers and the vendors that uh, that are servicing them and so um, to hear a little, this is an area Tripwire has been investing in uh, quite a bit recently, and to hear a little more about uh, how some of those services are manifesting, um, we wanted to cover some, um, some specific topics today. Um, first, we're going to be handing over to Onyeka Jones, who's our Senior Product Manager at Tripwire, to talk about our Expert Ops cloud-based managed service. And then we're going to be having a discussion with uh, Ann Thompson, who is the Quality Assurance Director at uh, Bain Capital, one of our Expert Ops customers. And uh, will also be an opportunity for uh, audience questions, either directed at uh, Ann or Onyeka or myself, potentially. Um, so anything in the domain of um, experience with managed services, uh, the kind of customers that we have, um, challenges that, uh, that we've seen um, our customers experience and how we've overcome them, anything of that nature you want to bring forward, we'd love to, love to hear what you'd like to know about. So with that said, let me hand over to Onyeka Jones. Thanks, Jason. As Jason mentioned, my name is Onyeka. I'm a Senior Product Manager at Tripwire, and I'm specifically focused on expert ops. So in my current role, I often speak with customers to understand their, their challenges and then to help us design our service, the expert ops service, to meet those challenges. So I'm very excited to tell you more about expert ops today, and then certainly to answer any questions that you might have at the end of the presentation. Okay, so with that, I'm going to jump in first and just talk to you a little bit about the some of the key trends that we've seen in the market. So you can think of these as macro trends. Uh, the first one is that they, they, there's constantly research that shows that there's just a dearth of cybersecurity professionals. And how that manifests itself is that many times organizations might find it difficult to hire staff, they might find it difficult to retain staff, because uh, you know, those talented professionals get hired away to a different company. 
And the result of that is that many times the teams that do exist can feel stretched or overwhelmed with all the tools that they need to manage and all the security alerts that they get and they need to respond to. And so what we've seen over time is that organizations are much more open and much more receptive to having some additional help from a vendor like Tripwire. Uh, so there's more, much more reception to outsourcing. Now on a much more micro level, so how does this manifest in your organization? Some of the, the main challenges that we've seen, we've heard from our customers are, uh, the first one is that there is a, a very real compliance and change management burden. So the whole process of going through an audit, making sure that you're compliant, that you can maintain that compliant posture over time, that you're monitoring your whole environment for unauthorized changes can be burdensome on those teams. Another area is data overload. So yes, you might have a vulnerability management solution and it's collecting all the data and all the vulnerabilities in your environment, but then it ends up resulting in just so much information that then needs to be prioritized and obviously remediated as well. And so uh, what the second challenge here is data overload. The third area that we've seen in terms of challenges is that as organizations are expanding their environment, they're adopting cloud solutions, container technologies, it can lead to a gap in coverage so if the existing tools that you have in your environment doesn't quite extend to cover all of these newer technologies that you're adopting, that can lead to a gap. And the last area is limited resources. So uh, this could be because organizations you know, are struggling, like I said earlier, to hire those, uh, the talented people, maintain the talent on those teams. Or it could just be that you'd rather have the you know the people that, that do exist on those teams work on things that are much more strategic. So rather than managing a tool, you know, working through reporting, you'd rather have them be much more strategic in how they spend their time. And these are the areas that expert ops helps our organizations with. Obviously it's not exhaustive, but it it sort of captures sort of the salient challenges that we've heard. For compliance and audit burden, we using Tripwire Enterprise as the engine, we can baseline every asset in your organization. We can help you detect unauthorized changes. And then we can also help you ensure that you're compliant with whatever standards you need to be compliant with, not just at a point in time, but over time. So achieving that posture, that compliant posture and maintain it over time. One of the ways that we do that is we provide you with a dedicated managed service engineer. And so in addition to managing the solution, making sure that it's working properly, they'll also be responsible for helping you comply with the various standards you might need to be compliant with, as well as providing customized reporting. So over and above the out of the box reports that we can provide to you, if there's a specific view that you need to see or a specific report for an audit, let's say, that many service engineer can assist you with that. And so that reduces the, the audit burden and the compliant burden as well. The second area is in data overload. So I mentioned uh, previously that yes, you may have a vulnerability management solution. It's collecting so much data. How do you prioritize? So this is where expert ops really shines. This is where we really help our customers because uh, first of all, we're using IP360, uh, Tripwire's vulnerability management solution as the engine. And so we, we can have that robust prioritization process. And in addition, we also provide our VM customers with a VERT resource. So VERT is, our, is, is short for Vulnerability and Exposure Research Team. They're the team of experts, security experts that build our vulnerability management solution. So they're very steep in the research. They understand the landscape. They're, they're out there discovering new vulnerabilities. And we provide this resource to our VM customers. So that means that over and above just what the tool can tell you, we also provide you with deep expertise to help you be much more efficient in how you prioritize your work, what you remediate, and what's what will make the most dramatic difference in your security posture. For limited coverage, we, we have the industry's broadest coverage of platforms and policies. And so if you need to be compliant with one standard or multiple standards, we can cover that for you. 
Also, as organizations are expanding to the cloud, we have additional capabilities for helping you maintain the compliant posture of your Amazon accounts, for example, or your Azure uh, management accounts. And then lastly, for limited resources, we provide you again uh, with a dedicated managed service engineer. This person, uh, their role is to act as an extension of your team. And so that means that you can reprioritize your resources to much more strategic events, so much more strategic areas, and, and will be responsible, your dedicated managed service engineer will be responsible for helping you get the value that you're looking for and helping you meet your organizational goals. Okay, so now uh, let me just spend some time talking a little bit more uh, specifically about what we provide customers in ExpertOps. So ExpertOps is a cloud-based managed service. We provide customers with Secure Configuration Management or SCM and FIM, File Integrity Monitoring, as well as Vulnerability Management. So in addition to you know, all the great benefits, if you're familiar with your prior enterprise or IP360, we provide all of those great benefits uh, but then much more specifically, we can tell you if there's any good or bad changes in your environment. Again, we provide the broadest coverage for policies and platforms. And then because we pair you with an expert to manage your solutions and to provide you with expertise, um, and to provide you with expertise, they can give you personalized advice, incident assistance, and support you through your audits. For vulnerability management, uh, we provide comprehensive discovery of all the assets in your environment. We can provide you with advanced scoring. And then again, the combination of your dedicated managed service engineer and the VERT resource will really help you in terms of moving and maturing your vulnerability management posture. ExpertOps also provides subscription pricing, which we know a lot of customers like. It's easy to deploy and use because you don't need to become an expert to start getting the value from our solution. And even if you already have, let's say, Trooper Enterprise, IP360, we can help you much more maximize the value from those solutions. And many of our customers have seen a lower total cost of ownership. Later on in the presentation, I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, how we help you achieve that lower total cost of ownership. So I'll just leave that for now. And then now let me tell you a little bit more about the different tiers of service that we provide in ExpertOps. So for secure configuration management and file integrity monitoring, we have three tiers of service. So we have essential, advanced, and advanced plus. At the essential tier, this is ideal for customers that are just getting started. They just want you know, a little bit more help, but they end up really take, uh, continuing to take on the burden of managing the solution. So the essential tier, your managed service engineer just provides you with day-to-day -day maintenance of the solution, and you, you will receive information that you can then respond to. What we've seen over the years of expert ops is that many of our customers actually just go with the advanced or the advanced plus tier. And that's because at those tiers, you're getting so much more value, so much more expertise from your managed service engineer. So for example, at the advanced tier, your managed service engineer will provide you with tuning assistance, customized reporting, as well as uh, we also bundle in two additional integrations they usually come as an additional cost and premise, but we've just bundled them in with expert ops because it provides so much amazing value to our customers. And the first one is dynamic software reconciliation or DSR. And the second is event sender. And the combination of these two applications really help to reduce the burden on our customers. So DSR just also promotes changes that happen as part of a Windows patch cycle. And uh, Event Center helps you integrate with other tools in your environment. We do have solution briefs that, that go into much more detail about each of these tiers. But my goal here is just to provide you with an overview to sort of help you grasp and maybe want to learn more about what we can do for you with Expert Ops. And then at the Advanced Plus tier, again, you get all the benefits from Essential and Advanced. But then here, uh, your managed service engineer provides you with best practice guidance, 
we can assist with change or conciliation, and we have much more robust integrations available to help you maximize the value, not just from Tripwire Enterprise, but really throughout your organization with other tools that you might have. Similarly, for vulnerability management, we also have three tiers of service. The, at the essential tier, you can think of it as where we identify vulnerabilities in your environment and notify you of those vulnerabilities. The advanced tier is where we provide even much more, uh, more advice and recommendations. And at the advanced plus tier is where we uh, provide, where we engage with you deeper and we help you provide plans to mature your posture. So the essential tier uh, here, we're just ensuring the scans are executed. We provide quarterly meetings to ensure that we're mapping to your organizational objectives, and then we provide some basic reports. At the advanced tier, here your managed service engineer is proactively monitoring your environment, assessing and, and prioritizing risk for you. We're also providing, again, customized reporting, as well as recommendations on how to remediate your vulnerabilities. Now, at the advanced plus tier, this is where VERT gets engaged. Again, VERT is our vulnerability and exposure research team. And an, an analyst from that team will be working with you at the Advanced Plus tier to help you prioritize the vulnerabilities in your specific environment to help you maximize and grow your security posture. So again, this is over and over and above the out-of-the-box reports, over and above the expertise that your many service engineer will be providing to you. Also at the Advanced Plus tier, again, we're providing uh, deeper recommendations, and then providing you with a plan to help you mature that secure posture over time. Okay, so I have a couple screenshots now just to show you and give you a sense for what your expert ops experience will be like. So here we have a redesigned UI for expert ops. So here, um, many customers often say things like, I just want a single pane of glass so I can see my Secure my security posture, my compliance posture, my vulnerability posture. We've provided that to customers with expert ops. So here, what you're seeing is compliance trends on the left-hand side and then vulnerability trends on the right-hand side. And this is just an example of the different dashboards that we provide customers with in expert ops. You also have a, a secure repository for your reports. While we can email customers those reports directly, if you need you know, other people on your team to get access to these reports, or you just want a, kind of a secure place where those reports are being stored, you have that available to you here in the portal. Uh, so your managed service engineer will be responsible for running those reports, customizing them, and then providing them to you here. Going back to what I mentioned earlier, about uh, limited coverage and, and gaps in coverage. In expert ops, not only can we monitor your on-premise assets, we can also monitor your assets hosted in the cloud. And with the newer addition of configuration management, we can ensure that your, your account in Amazon or an, on Azure AWS uh, or in Azure are secure. They're in compliant with the CIS policy. So that's what you're seeing here. It's just an example of our configuration management module in expert ops. And, and now uh, I mentioned earlier that we have a lower total cost of ownership with expert ops. So, I mean, how do we do this, right? So if you're, if you're running our solution yourself on premise or really any other solution, you need to be you know, responsible for the hardware, the infrastructure, the licenses, of course, the cost of implementing it, deploying it and, the really the opportunity cost of the time that you're spending to become an expert on a on a solution. There are obviously training costs, especially if you lose a team member or just hired someone new. There's the operational cost of maintaining it and then obviously the security team. Now with expert ops, many of these costs are included because we take on the responsibility for you. We're hosting it for you, the licenses are included, professional services is also included with expert ops. We implement it for you. So we, we partner with you in how we, in deploying, deploying it and configuring it. And then for training, you know, honestly, many customers don't even need training with expert ops, but if you do, it's, it's very minimal because again, you don't need to become an expert 
you have an expert working with you. Uh, the operational side, making sure that it's up to date, that it's working properly, the maintenance, that is all included with expert ops. And then for security staffing, again, you might already have that team in place, but now they can be dedicated in other much more strategic initiatives in your environment. Okay, so now in summary, I just wanna leave you with some uh, key ideas and, and areas to think about for expert ops. So if any of these resonate with you, I seriously encourage you to consider expert ops. Uh, the first one is needing to ensure a secure posture at scale. So we often you know, see this from organizations that have multiple business units or locations all around the world or even just all around a specific country. Uh, if you have mergers and acquisitions, you have franchises, extra is a great solution because we can help you ensure a secure posture at scale. You don't have to take on that operational burden. We'll just make sure that every location has that same secure posture. This is some of the work and the, the burden that, that the managed service engineer can take on for you. The second area is if you need to get more value from your investment and you want to do this quickly and at scale. So if you're experiencing anything like turnover on your team, if you have the solution, but it's not, it's just deployed in a small part of your environment and you know that you have much more critical assets that you need to secure or other use cases that you'd like to explore, uh, XROPS is a great solution. And if you have a complex environment that is just kind of hard to manage, again, we can work with you, partner with you to help you deploy it, maximize the value from your investment and just take off that operational burden from you. Now, none of these might resonate with you, but let's say you, you say, uh, I actually want to do more in terms of security. I would love to do more. I just don't have the time or the resources. This is where having the expertise that Expert Ops provides can really help to, to mature your secure posture. Now, the last two, uh, if you want to pass an audit quickly, I can't tell you how many times we hear, oh, I have an audit coming up. I need a solution very quickly to help us pass this audit. And Expert Ops is great for that. Because of the time to value, how short it is, you know, so we can we will deploy it for you. You said you can start getting value as quickly as possible. We're a great solution if you have an audit coming up, if you recently filled an audit and you just or you just want to, you know, maintain, achieve and maintain that secure posture, we can help you with it, especially if you need to comply with multiple standards. And last pricing, right? Everyone, everyone likes a good price. Uh, so I already talked about the lower total cost of ownership for expert ops. If you have a preference for OPEX spend, expert ops is fantastic for that. It's a subscription price. If you'd prefer a SaaS solution or a managed uh, solution as a preference, you know, expert ops is your answer. And lastly, the lower total cost of ownership that I shared with you earlier. So uh, that's the end of my section. I'll hand it over to Jason to take us further in the session. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Onika. That was uh, that was great. Um, hopefully, folks uh, were able to get uh, something of value out of that. I thought there was a lot of uh, a lot of useful things covered. So, um, um, next we are going to um, move over to um, our customer um, attendee. Uh, we have Ann Thompson who's Director of Quality Assurance at uh, Bain Capital. Um, so, Anne, would you care to say a few words to introduce yourself? Sure, sure, thank you. And thank you um, for your time. I appreciate being here. Um, I'm Ann Thompson, and um, as my introduction says, I have over 25 years of experience in IT. Um, my background is um, with quality, quality assurance and testing. Um, but I'm also involved in my current position. Um, I work for a company called Bain Capital here in Boston. And um, my current position is that of quality assurance, testing, and also I'm responsible for um, change management and you know, um, the, the cab process here at Bain. And um, it's an overall um, overarching quality theme um, we want to ensure that there's stability in the environment and that, you know, good processes and practices are, are taking place. Um, with that, we've been using Tripwire 
um, to manage file integrity management. Um, that's been our main uh, use case for the, pro for the product. And um, I have been the product owner at Bain and I've been working with the tool for over about six years or so. Um, and it's been instrumental in me helping to manage the environment and working across the different teams um, to ensure that we have, pro you know, change controls in place. Um, in addition to that, we just recently moved over to expert ops and um, it was a no brainer for us. We've worked um, really closely with our managed service um, representative, um, our TRO um, person, and he has been awesome. I've been working with him for a couple of years now and he's been talking to me here and there about the possible transition to expert ops. I had hesitated for a little bit because at the time, not thinking that really, you know, you know, even though we are, you know, fairly decent sized organization, that it was something that, you know, we needed. After exploring a little bit more in the last, um, within the last year with, X, with Tripwire and some of the team there, um, it just turned into a no-brainer for us. Um, just like in the previous presentation, the lower cost of ownership, um, I am the support of the tool um, internally at Bain and, you know, the burden of having to deal with regular um, maintenance upgrades, um, you know, coordination and, you know, pushing these things, you know, even upgrading our Windows operating systems. It was, you know, at that, it's just been turning into a lot of extra work. And I am a pretty lean team, um, so I don't have a, a ton of people under me um, to help me manage the process. So just that alone was a, a really good um, driver to move to this platform. In addition to that, um, just hearing about the capabilities in some of, you know, what we just heard about um, so about DSR, and that's something that we currently didn't get with the on-prem solution. And that was something that, uh, you know, obviously that comes right out of the box for expert ops that we are looking to put in place in the organization. In addition to that, vulnerability management, working a little bit closer with our InfoSec team um, to do a better job providing information about vulnerability management. And I think that Tripwire could help help provide a lot more value as well with our organization. Um, another reason why we opted to pursue expert ops is because it also aligned with our um, current um, cloud strategy. So we recently put in place um, a strategy um, over the last couple of years to start moving a more into the cloud and um, we hired a director who is responsible for implementing that strategy. And um, he's been pushing the teams to start looking at their environment and, and to see you know, where there were opportunities. And when I brought this to him and asked for his advice, he said, absolutely, it does not make sense at this point for us to be hosting it. And it also, um, we also have our own instance in AWS where we were pushing things to the cloud, it made more sense for us to look to um, leverage the support from Tripwire um, in their in their cloud environment. Like I said, that, you know, they could, they will be responsible for taking a lot of that support maintenance off our shoulders. So, I mean, uh, there's so many driving forces for us to look at this and um, we were able to I was able to work with my management and get the approval and um, you know, now we are today, we're, we're, we're up and running and the cutover was quite seamless. Um, and I'm really happy we did it, we did it. That's wonderful. Okay, thank you very much, Anna. I really appreciate your, um, your perspective here. It's always helpful to hear from um, folks who've actually been in the trenches using the product themselves and then transitioning over to uh, um, 
some kind of managed services engagement and then taking the step past that into the full hosted offering. So uh, hearing your um, uh, experience around that is actually great. So, one more, um, point, one oh, more yes. point I wanted, didn't make is um, we also use Tripwire to help with audits and um, they can be quite tense. Every six months we, we do get audited and um, I'm actually in the middle of one now. And But I mean, a big concern I had about moving to expert ops is that I, I wanted to make sure that I would still get the same information. I would still be able to, you know, leverage what I can and um, that I am today, what I was before we moved over. And, um, you know, Ryan, who happens to be our um, support, he's been instrumental in helping with that. And he's been pulling together meetings, um, not meetings, excuse me, um, reporting and answering questions and just really, really helping me through the process. So um, there was, again, another testament of why you know, Tripwire has been really helpful in, with the managed service, and uh, that that is also why. Again, um, at times I get thrown lots of questions, and I mean, I do have a day job. I wear multiple hats, so it's really really tough to, you know, be able to do this alone. So, you know, his support is is has been invaluable as well. Okay, great. Yeah, that's um, one of the capabilities that. Um... Um, I don't think it's enough, uh, enough visibility is having a engineer that is extremely familiar with the product and also has the experience with your environment can substantially reduce the time it takes to, um, um, harvest the information needed to support audits. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a, um, um, very valuable thing that I'm glad you're able to take advantage of. Uh, all right, so that brings us to the Q&A portion of, um, of our talk here. So uh, we do have a few questions that have come in so far. If you have not had the chance, please feel free to add your questions using the Q&A widget you'll see down there at the bottom. And uh, again, these um, questions can either be directed at uh, Onika from a um, uh, product direction and positioning standpoint. Uh, or Anne from her experience um, as an actual user um, of, uh, of the solution. All right, so uh, the first question we have here is actually um, for Anne. Um, so you already, you spoke a little bit about some of the motivators for adopting um, managed services. Um, what were some of the perceived risks that um, that you were dealing with up front that made you perhaps or others in your organization um, more hesitant to uh, to adopt? Um, I think um, the biggest hesitation, I think, was actually ensuring that we had secure and protected data that that tripwire is monitoring. I think that was the biggest because now it's it was not going to be you know internal. It, it would be hosted in tripwire's um, environment, and I think the biggest hesitation that our vendor risk team had was to ensure that that was secure, that information is secure, and that there is no possibility that there's any kind of confidential information. Um, that would, you know, would be surfaced, you know, outside our, you know, organization. And so that, that was one of the things that I had to deal with. Um, but, you know, the good thing is there was no risk of that because what Tripwire is monitoring is not actually looking at the data itself, but it's actually looking at changes to files, good procedures and things of that nature. So it wouldn't, that, that didn't turn out to be a risk, but that was something that people were concerned about, for sure. Okay. All right, excellent. All right, so, um, and actually following up on that, um, as part of the um, um, exploratory process, um, did 
were all those uh, risks effectively addressed? Was there any that we that you um, had to just kind of accept, or at the end of the day, was your security, your infosec team, very much on board with this? They were on board. They didn't. They they you know once you know we have a very thorough um, process and questionnaire process. Um, um, under information security, we have a team um, called Vendor Risk, and so our Vendor Risk um, at you know um, manager, she was able to get information pretty pretty easily from Tripwire and the team there to you know to uh, you know and then I believe she had a couple of follow up meetings, but those those questions and the mitigation to those were um, pretty apparent. So she. They're really, you know, I think that most of the risks or the concerns that she had and that, you know, as a as a firm we have in place were mitigated um, quite easily. Okay, excellent. All right, thanks, Anne. All right, uh, next question is for Onyeka. So, um, in your experience, what uh, what industries or um, or verticals have you seen? be most likely to adopt managed services? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, generally, we've seen organizations that are highly regulated or organizations and industries that have, you know, multiple business units, multiple locations. So in expert ops, our customers tend to be financial customers, large financial customers. They also tend to be in retail, in hospitality, uh, for, the, for all of those reasons, right? Because they have multiple locations, they need help to secure all of those uh, all of those locations, and they also have a lot of compliance standards that they need to comply with. Okay, excellent. All right, and uh, one more question, Oneka, kind of um, um, drafting behind that same theme. Uh, are there particular customer pain points or specific use cases where you've seen managed services be the most successful? Yes, you know, I think it probably even is kind of aligned with what I said er earlier about the, the verticals, the industries that are represented. Generally, for managed services, if there are multiple compliance standards that organizations need to, you know, adhere to, we've seen that be a really great use case for expert ops and those could be either external standards or even internal processes. So that, that's one of the main drivers. Another area is, or rather another use case, you know, again, hand in hand with compliances, if you have a requirement for configuration management or file integrity monitoring, ExpertOps does a great job of helping you manage that and then also expand the use, those use cases to security, for example. Okay, wonderful. All right, we have a, another uh, question from the uh, from the audience here. Um, asking, how is the expert ops uh, system? How are systems measured uh, by policies like CIS and PCI uh, to ensure that we're providing a um, compliant audit posture regarding the actual use of the product and um, is reporting of these policies uh, provided to the customer? So uh, my take on that would be um, the environment that we've created in our cloud environment and our cloud hosting provider is um, something we put a substantial amount of effort into making as secure as possible. Uh, and we do have um, um, regular security assessments. Uh, we have some periodic audits that we do go through. Uh, we have our SOC 2 audit that's an annual thing, and we have our PCI audit as well. Our, um, our cloud environment is PCI certified, and we do have both the SOC 2 type 2 audit reports as well as our PCI attestation of compliance. And so those are typically artifacts that we provide to um, uh, to our existing customers on a periodic basis or as needed to support their particular audit cycle. Uh, and we also regularly provide those during the um, uh, 
um, during the initial conversations as part of the due diligence exercises that Anne was referring to about kind of the the vendor analysis. So yeah, those are those are both things that we are more than happy to provide to customers as needed. Okay, so hmm, we do have a question about um, uh, if there's any specific scenarios about how expert ops can help reduce FTE allocations, operational overhead, and so on. Um, Onik, is that something you would be you would speak to, or should I field that one? Yeah, yeah, I can answer that, and you can chime in. So, I mean, Jason mentioned earlier he manages the team that actually delivers expert ops. So I'm sure you can add some color there. But in general, you know, some examples of what we've heard is, yeah, for example, we had a a customer who was dedicating to full time employees to their vulnerability management program. One was responsible for managing the tool; the other was responsible for reports. Um, but with expert ops, we can reduce that. Our, our estimate is about uh, a quarter of a full-time employee for VM because you'll have two experts working with you, right? You'll have the vert resource and the managed service engineer working with you. And then for uh, compliance, SCM or, or FIM, our estimate there is probably about um, half a full-time employee. Obviously, it varies by organization, but these are just our, our general guidance, because again, we'll take on most of the work, like Anne did a great job of sharing, of um, you know helping you with the audits, helping you with the reporting, maintaining the solution, upgrades, all of that work. Okay. Um, and actually, before, before I uh, provide my little two cents on that, uh, Anne, from your perspective, um, as the person who was previously owning this product and now you have someone to lean on to assist. Uh, do you have a rough guess of um, how much time of your own this has saved by adopting managed services? Um, I would say, I think uh, maybe for me, for us, um, we do have a, a pretty well-oiled system. I would say maybe about a quarter to a half of a resource for sure. Um, it comes in peaks and valleys, but if I were half, if I had to guesstimate, it would be about that. Okay. All right, great. And um, yeah, as uh, Onika mentioned, my uh, my team are the engineers that actually are delivering the service, and um, that experience definitely scores with what I've seen. So, the reality is. Um, even though we are charged with all the operational activities in to ensure that your tripwire solution is up and running consistently, smoothly, effectively, that is always up to date, all those things we manage, um, there, because there's a certain point where we must interface with, uh, with a customer team because at the end of the day, these are your systems, right? We own the mm -hmm. product, we own the, the um, operational responsibilities of that product, but we do still need some touch point within the customer environment for the system owners to weigh in and help provide us some guidance and context as to what is actually considered appropriate. So we do have automations that we can put in place to mechanically validate and approve changes that, uh, that we detect. And we have other tools that can help us surface those changes which are more likely to be exceptions to um, proper practice but uh, yeah there's still there still needs to be some um, some uh, skin in the game from the systems team um, with that said for a product like tripwire enterprise or ip360 these products don't run themselves right and folks who've had hands-on time with the product know there's a fair amount of care and feeding necessary to keep the thing rolling down the road all of that stuff, all that basic blocking and tackling is all managed by um, our team of engineers. So what that lets you do is focus on only those aspects of the product that provide the direct business value, right? Reviewing the critical changes made to production systems that were unapproved, right? Or that didn't happen during a maintenance window. That's that's really the meter. That's the benefit that the, the promise of the product is offering. And by having the engineering team take basically everything else but that off your plate, it allows um, 
the customers to focus on those things that are providing the most direct benefit. Okay, so um, another question for Onyeka. Um, okay, a little bit different angle on this one. Are there some situations you've seen where a cloud-hosted service might not be the best fit? And are there alternatives you might suggest? Yeah, so, you know, there there have been some situations where because of internal uh, policies, the organization cannot adopt a cloud solution. That's that's an area we've seen. Or in some geographies, because XFLOPS is available globally, uh, in some geographies, there isn't, you know, like a local hosting option uh, where it's hosted in the cloud. And so in those situations, you know, the, the organization has to maintain the, the data, the infrastructure, the solution on premise. Uh, however, we can still help from a managed service perspective, right? So the, the value of having the resource to act as an extension of your team, we can still provide that. Anne mentioned earlier that she was actually a TRO customer or an expert ops uh, remote operations customer. And, and here, we, we're still giving you the benefit of a managed service. It's just that the solution is hosted on-premise. So that's an option that I would recommend if you're, you know, in that situation where you can't adopt a cloud-hosted solution, we can certainly still give, give you the benefit of a managed service solution, even though the solution stays on-premise. All right. Um, all right, that's great. And, yeah, it's true. It's easy to... Um, get very focused on simply the, um, the the cloud hosted story because that's honestly where, where there's so much uh, active uh, attention in the industry but at the end of the day it's very valid not all customers can adopt um, a cloud hosted solution but that doesn't mean they can't make use of managed services so there's there's definitely an opportunity to still provide value there all right um, we have another question from uh, from the field. Uh, can expert ops work with uh, using IP360 to identify assets, categorize them, and allow easy management uh, of those assets uh, with regards to scanning and patching? Um, so yes, uh, this is definitely in the capability set of uh, IP360. It's very uh, effective at identifying and profiling all of the assets in your environment, anything within the uh, network range you point us to. And in the process, we'll identify the specific platform, the applications and services running on those systems, uh, and then build you a um, inventory accordingly. Um, we also, through Expert Ops, do support um, Asset tagging and classification. There's actually an area. This is an area of active development we're working on improving, to allow you to um, provide detailed reporting on the security posture of your environment, based on either on a platform basis or location, or owner or functional role. You know, we try to represent however you see your environment, how you think about your environment. We map that to the way we organize and classify the assets in Tripwire Enterprise and IP360. Um, also on the IP360 side, we can provide detailed reports of um, the existing vulnerabilities that, uh, that are present in your environment, along with remediation um, steps that map out specific uh, patches and hotfixes that need to be applied. And this is also an area where, as Onika mentioned, our VERT team can get involved, and they have um, their own take on kind of a, a patch-centric view of your um, um, of your remediation process, right? So, kind of having that conversation of where you should be focusing your energies, kind of the, the bang for the buck conversation, so to speak, um, and some of those uh, perspectives and the insight is not straightforward to codify into a product. It really benefits from a um, individual with the experience and the perspective um, to take a more holistic view of what should happen for your environment. And that's the experience that the VERT team brings to the table. Um, with that said, IP360 is not 
directly a patching tool, right? If there are patches that need to be applied, we'll tell you about them. But IP360 is not um, structured in such a way. It's not intended to fulfill that particular use case. We work very well with patching systems, but we ourselves um, do not um, um, do not offer that particular functionality. All right, so I think those are uh, most of the questions that we have. Um, if there's anything else you're curious about, then that is your chance to get them in. Um, otherwise, if we're um, winding down, I would say thank you very much to Anne uh, and Onyeka for spending the time with us today. And um, thank you all for attending. And let me hand it back to Liz. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, I'd like to thank our speakers, Jason, Onyeka, and Anne, for a great presentation, and thank you to our audience for attending. We hope you found the presentation informative and useful to you. If you would like to receive proof of attendance, please respond to the follow-up email that you'll receive at the conclusion of the event. Um, and as a fun bonus, we're raffling off an Amazon gift card to an attendee that submitted a question during the Q&A portion. So congrats to Jack Harris. I'll be reaching out to you after the event. We hope you'll join us for future webcasts for more great content and another chance to win. Uh, you can check out our schedules at tripwire.com. Uh, thank you, everyone, again for attending, and we hope that you have a great day.